I had like a weird, like a tingling sensation inside of my head. This particular cellar had convicts down there. Oh, what the fuck? Fuck off. How about that? These are real convict leg irons. These are real. I know someone's banging on the door or the closet. Were you one of the residents that lived here? I think I just seen like, the shadow move through there. Really? Yep. Do you know anything about us? Turn around. Turn around? Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Is there anybody in here? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm fucking shivering too. And I just felt like someone was behind me the whole time. Yeah. This hallway is so scary. Fuck this, bro. I'm out. What do you mean you're out? What the fuck was that? doing not bad thanks for asking we are on another ghost hunt it is a dark and stormy night out just outside of Newcastle we are tonight at a place called Lock and Bar House now Lock and Bar House has a history of violence of bush rangers of death gore probably I don't really know yet but we will find out at some point this evening but I am not oh, alone yes. I've got little Dixon with me little Dixon Australia's premier ghost hunter she is pumped she is keen she is Ready. ready. <laughs> she is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be really, really cool. <laughs> this place was given to a Scotsman in 1822. He was given this giant parcel of land. At 20 years old. At 20 years old. I don't know. What, you already know the story. Why am I telling you? I've Googled. <laughs> For the people at home, listen, this is very important. He was 20 years old, as little Dixon said. He was given the land, a giant, giant area. It then got subdivided into like... I think it was 15 or 20 acreages. I think that's a massive guess, so who bloody knows? But let's get out and have a look, shall we? All right. So the things that have happened previously here, so not only have visitors who have been here and stayed overnight heard the voices of little children crying, there have also been visitors who have been overnight here and heard a clock ticking yes. continuously. We had that a couple of times, that yeah. report. And there's no clock that ticks no. here. Very interestingly, a few years ago, what was reported was there is a, a big glass pane mm -hmm. that sits up over the doorway. Oh, yeah. And that cracked, broke, and all the glass shattered and fell to the ground. And there's absolutely no reason for that happening. <laughs> I tell you what, the atmosphere is thick of hauntings over here. It's a pretty creepy place. I see Very you, creepy. I see you found a dog, that's exciting. <laughs> he came over to me. Okay. Do you hear that? Yeah. Something, something slightly overweight is coming. Something slightly overweight is coming. Ah! Oh the my king God. is back! <laughs> Zach Wild, straight out of lockdown. Here's your prize. What are you doing? <laughs> you big, there you go, this is what you get. You get a 400 year old dog, it's very exciting. Uh, welcome to Lock and Var House, Zachariah. Isn't it? Hello. It's been 12 months since we did our last months. ghost hunt. Eight You're back. months? Eight months. Congratulations. What's happening? Not much. Let's go. Let's do it. But first, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this video is brought to you by the amazing people at Tactical Edge Hobbies. Tactical Edge Hobbies is one of Australia's largest retailers of gel blasters. It's absolutely amazing. They have tactical accessories, gel blasters, gel blasters accessories. These guys have got absolutely everything. And the Tactical Edge staff will help you out with anything that you need to do with gel blasting. Tactical Edge Hobbies has two dedicated fields, one outdoor, one indoor, and it's right next to their superstore. Their online store is also so easy to navigate through. You can find products, and there's also free shipping with any order over $40. Use the code BUTTS15 to get 15% off their entire store right now, excluding their CO2 pistol range. And ladies and gentlemen, make sure you follow Tactical Edge right now on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. These guys are the best in the business, and you should go and check them out. Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are sitting inside a 200 year old kitchen and yes, it absolutely reeks, but we know nothing of this joint. We know nothing about it and that's why everywhere we go where we're hunting the paranormals, hunting ghosts, demons and everything in between, we take the best in the business, the ghost grannies, they're back, Anne and Renata. Woo! How you doing? I can't believe you got us back after that last comment we had. <laughs> hey, what about the last video? You had so many people talking so much shit about you. I want both of you, in take a turn, yeah. look down the barrel of that camera yeah. and tell the people out there who called you old, charlatans, full of shit, yeah. all that type of stuff. What do you have to say to them? Fuck you, we've been filming with Isaac. <laughs> yeah, dickheads, all right? Leave the poor ghost grannies alone. That's yeah. right. We're having a good time, yeah. so there you go. Ren Renata's going to fucking knock you out. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Luke next, 23 in the next comments. Next time I hear you someone out. say, old lady, I'm going to slap you so hard, you won't be able to sit down for weeks. Now, old love, listen to me. What? <laughs> we are in a 200 year old house yes. that you built that. <laughs> <laughs> Why would this place be haunted, do you think? Well, we've had a, a number of stories here from people who have been here and looked after the place um, because this is now a bed and breakfast so people do come here on the weekends uh, and during the week okay. so it certainly can be um, rented out but there have been a number of different sightings and different things going on even as recently as a few weeks ago mm -hmm. we had um, a phone call to say that people who were in one of the particular bedrooms actually woke up in the middle of the night and heard children crying. Ooh. Mm. And we're going to be making use of that room tonight with uh, trigger objects to yeah. hopefully get something happening for you guys. Very nice. Well, um... So, but that's not all. That's oh, not all. Not so there has There's been a, uh, a female figure in this particular area and through into the kitchen area that's been seen, full-bodied. We've actually seen people walking up and down the hallways while we have been here. Shadow figures. Shadow figures. Right. Like um, kind of people. There we've had, while we've had people stay here because we do some overnight um, ghost Experiences. Experiences. Sleepovers. Sleepovers. Sleepovers with the ghosts. Ghost sleepovers. Paranormal like pyjama parties. Yeah. Um, oh. We have had... I've got people... ectoplasm on me. <laughs> we, we've had people reporting the ticking of a clock that doesn't exist all night long. We've had people saying that there have been notes on the piano that is in the back room that is not being played. Okay. Um, people have also noted that sheets have been pulled off them at night. Oh, and footsteps, like and, and like and footsteps, footsteps in the room. And there was one particular oh. evening, we were all in one particular room and we could hear the footsteps very clearly walking around us. And wow. There was nobody else in the house. And things are removed from the bedside tables and placed elsewhere during okay. the night. So that's pretty full on. That is very full on. Well, I mean, let's get into it. We've, we've been stuffing around here in the kitchen. Yeah. In the dining room. Eating cheese and cavanossi. Eating cheese and cavanossi. So let's get stuck in. So we've got what a, a caterer. <laughs> what are we going to do first? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is blindfold you and take you one I at a time. I hate being blindfolded. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Exactly. Um, we're going to take you through one at a time and get you to try and use your senses rather than us <clears throat> doing our thing because you all think we're faking it. Uh, we're going to get you <laughs> to uh, um, tell us what you feel and what you sense and then we'll bring you all back and compare notes. So in between, don't tell each other what you said in each area. Okay, let's do it. Who's going first? I will. Oh, oh geez, he's a fucking man. hero, ladies and gentlemen. At the red bearded lesbian. Okay, blindfold on. <sighs> I need to check your seal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're leading you down a hallway. Yep. And I want you just to, first of all, tell me if you're feeling anything different here. On my left, I feel a lot, a lot of energy over this side. Okay. Anything in particular? Does it make you feel... Uh, like someone's right in my ear or something? <laughs> Okay, all right, very interesting. This is straight down a hallway, so all we're going is straight. Oh, oh. Now if you sense anything at any stage, you'd say stop. Oh, it's getting colder a bit, just slightly on my arms. Mm-hmm. On my, on my legs. Now? Left or right side? 
I was sort of like to here. Okay. And net just a little bit on my ankles to here. Okay. Excellent. So first thing we did was the walkthrough mm -hmm. with everyone singly. And that was so that they could get a sense of the house. Yep. Now we have a room here to our left. Mm. What do you feel from there? What does it feel like? Ominous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. You'll see why later. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea of going in there. I don't know why. Ah, because mm. we had activity last time we were here. Now, if we just stand right here, mm -hmm. do you sense any spirit that might be around us? What popped into your mind as soon as I said that? I don't know, a woman? Yep, because that's exactly what I was thinking. As well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure and, she's nice. But... And once again, I'm it's all right, put your hands up. And you put your hand out to the side where you think she's standing. And here? Yeah, it's ex exactly where I pointed as well. Really? Yeah. We took away their vision by putting um, masks on. Yes. And they all got the same sense that something was a little bit strange. Yeah, in that one in position, that one spot. just yeah. near the bathroom. I had like a weird, like a thing there. Okay. Just back there. Yeah, there it is again. Right here. Like a tingling sensation on this side of my head. Good, okay. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Big fan of the tingling sensation. Love Fine. it. All three of them at the, the same one spot. spot there said that they felt some sort of sensation or energy yeah. or... Really? Yep. yep. Yeah, every single yep. one of you. Between wow. here and here. That With their blindfolds cool. on, we were asking them, which side do you feel it's yeah. on? And they all said on the left-hand side. Yeah. So yeah. that was cool. That was very cool. And we just noticed that this thing is swinging and nobody's actually touched it. This being the uh, light the switch. The hallway light. Which I thought it was originally one of those things like you see on like Downton Abbey, which I watched quite a bit. That's not a joke, dead serious. Uh, you pull it, can I pull it? Yep. And it turns the light on. Or imagine if someone was at the end of there. <laughs> there is not. Hooked yourself. I know. <laughs> wow. Okay, interesting. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I've got an issue with blindfolds. I hate them. I hate being blindfolded. And all my concern is about being blindfolded. I hate it. So maybe there isn't too much relaxing from my point of view on there to actually pick up anything. But it's definitely creepy. And when I walked past there where you said everyone else felt a bit of energy, I felt like a weird tingling run down the side of my face. On the same side. Did yeah. you get all it on you. the left-hand side as well? I did, you yeah. You did? Yeah, you did. I don't know. Maybe it's because we walked into a different space. Obviously, um, when you come in here, it's a bit more open, well it's not more open, but it is definitely turning. Very, very strange. We're going to take you to a secret place in this house. Oh. And most houses that were built around this era would have had a secret place like this. And the thing is that it was secret, it was covered, and people who were coming into the home would have never have known where it was. So normally there was a piece of furniture on the top uh, or it was covered by a piece of carpet. This particular cellar was also used here uh, during the time of building of the house and it had convicts down there and the convicts would have been chained to the wall. Really? So we're putting you down into that environment. You feel okay about that? Or do I have a choice? No. No. <laughs> well. I want to give you the full experience here. It's like 50 Shades of Grey, 1822. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. you oh, might. Okay. <laughs> All right, shall, shall we reveal? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Oh, this way. Okay, so this first. Oh, what? Oh, this is what I want in our house. <laughs> when oh. the telemarket has come around. <laughs> oh my god. Right, so what we're going to do is send you pair down there, because yep. there's not a lot of space. Okay. Uh, and do you remember the Portal Plus, the thing that sounds like the diabolical man and woman and child that talks to you? Yes. The one, well, the, the voice box? Yeah. Right. We're going to get, set that running down there and I want you to try and find out what the cellar was used for, how the convicts were treated. Okay. And have a conversation with them using this. Sounds good. You won't have headphones on. Okay. You'll just be talking to it. Going down into that, it, the, the stairs are so narrow 
and there's a convict bricks everywhere. Yeah. There is so much history that has been soaked into those walls. And I think it's freaky as fuck, really. Where's the handrail? Where's the OH&S? WHS. Watch, watch your back, watch your back. Be careful. Oh, what the fuck? Why is it? Why is there so much shit in the air? Oh, this is so creepy. Oh, I don't know about this. He's yelling random shit. I need a fucking COVID mask down here. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Is this, is this natural air? <laughs> it's, it's natural air. We thought we'd put them down there by themselves yeah. so that we weren't leading thoughts of what might happen. We thought that we'd let them lead the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Lights are going up. Where are you going? Upstairs. See ya. Let's turn the lights off. Okay, so the lights are about to go off in this 200 year old cellar. And I am casually, oh, for fuck's sake. Hear me? Hello, is there anyone in here? You're a pussy. <laughs> How much was your t-shirt? Well, merch is on sale now, but. <laughs> now, my name is Isaac. And I'm Zach. This is Zach. And we come here with respect. We, we know a lot of horrible things happen down here. Is there anyone down here with us? Yes. Yes. What is your name? It said hello, Isaac. No, it didn't. Did you live here? No. No. Did you? Were, were you chained up here? No. Nah. No. No. Where are you? Are you? Oh fuck. Yeah, I'm fucking shivering too. Are you behind? Uh, do you like Zach? Oh, <laughs> fuck, bro. That was weird. Oh, I can feel it like behind me. Is there someone moving behind us? Dude, this is fucking creepy. We come here with all respect. We don't wish you. We don't wish you any harm. Fuck, I've got so many goosebumps right now. Yeah. Do you know anything about us? Just turn around. Turn around? <gasps> fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! <laughs> Don't swear at us. Not doing a thing. Not faking that shit. Oh, <laughs> this is far. All right, well, where? Oh, shit. What did it say? I don't know, but I'm freaking out. Why are you trying to scare us? Oh. oh. Fuck this, bro. I'm out. What do you mean you're out? <laughs> Fine, fuck it. Fuck that. Watch your head, watch your watch head, your watch your back. Oh, fuck me head, it'll be alright. <laughs> what happened down there? Okay. So we're just sitting there, jerking each other off. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Please we're wash your hands. We're just, <laughs> we were just sitting there and the voice box just goes clear as day. It said, turn around. And that freaked us the fuck out. It just said, turn around. And we both turned around and screamed like little children. <laughs> and then Zach ran out of the room and I was like, I'm not fucking staying there down by myself. It's fucking scary. That was horrible. Yeah. Cool, huh? Great. <laughs> Confined space, mm -hmm. darkness, mm -hmm. and that really creepy sound coming out of that um, Portal Plus. Yeah. That does it every single time. Yeah. But they also felt something was behind them too. Yes. They actually did feel something, so that was really good. Okay, so these are real convict leg irons. These are real? Real. So we'll put those on your legs, just so that you can kind of get a sense of what it feels like. Just so I can't run. Yeah, gotcha. Oh. Now, convicts who absconded with a ball and chain on were often given a double ball and chain and sometimes even a triple ball and chain. So that wherever they stood, they literally stood in one spot right. and that's where they worked because okay. they would run away all the time. Yep. And just to really freak you out, and you can hold on to these, 
these could be children's. Oh, what? So I'll give you those to hold. Oh. Why would they have children? Because they brought children over in the early days as well. All right, let's hit the lights and Sayonara. sit down, Zach. Okay, I'm sitting here with leg irons on and a ball and chain. Are you a man or a woman? Man. How old are you? Do you miss your family? Did you live here? Who did you live with? Someone. Someone here. Behind you. Are you behind us? Is this room too crowded now? Or do you like having the company? Yes. Are you unwell? What's that? Are you sick? Did you not hear that? I did hear that. What was that? I don't know, there's something up there. Are you above us? I'm in the corner. No, it didn't say I'm in the corner. <laughs> what corner are you in? Where in the cellar? In the cellar. This corner. Oh, that was creepy. I am. You are in this corner. I am oh. in the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for telling us that. What is your name? What's your name? Are you happy? Are you at peace? I am. Yes. We're happy to hear that. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you're at peace. Are you alone? Me and Robert? Yeah. I... Me and Robert. Who is Robert? Robert, are you here? Follow me. Okay, I'll be honest, I can say at the very least, I was absolutely shitting myself at this point. Thank you, we're going to leave Thank now. You. Thank you very much. But as far as conversations go with ghosts, this was one of the best that we have ever had. It's definitely a lot more scarier with two people, but we did get a lot of action. <laughs> That's the most scared I've ever been, doing these ghost hunts. What do you call them? I feel like saying a hunt is like rude. Investigation. Ghost investigation. Robert Maxwell? <laughs> what? Is that what we heard? Uh, Robert. Oh, Robert. Robert. Yeah. That's a Robert. Are you alone? Me and Robert? Yeah. So when we were down there, we asked um, what their name was and they said that Robert was Robert. with them. And there was a captain, a portrait of Captain Robert Maxwell by an unknown artist. <clears throat> but that's exactly what they said. And it's just behind camera right there, exactly where we were downstairs in the cellar. And there's that portrait. That is, as we know in the business, as uh, fucking creepy. Mm. Anyway, that was well, fun. Was he a captain? He was a captain of the British naval force, I guess. The general feeling down there is weird, man. I just felt like someone was behind me the whole time. Yeah. Because it kept saying, behind you, behind you. And that, they came through really clear, rather, that behind us, we're behind you. That was what they were trying to say. Uh, you were creeped out. You ran at one point. I tripped over a rock as well. I don't know if you can see that on camera. <laughs> what do you mean you're out? <laughs> what do you mean you're out? I feel like we've been in this house now for some time, but we haven't really explored it. And that is what we're going to do now. We're going to go and check out the rest of the house. We are sending you into what is allegedly the most haunted room in this place. This is the one where people hear things. So these particular spirits in this room don't want you to see them. They want you to hear them. Okay. So often it is a child's voice. Oh, God. Again, things are moved around. Mm -hmm. So you place them next to the bedside table and then there's somewhere else in the morning. What the hell is that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can we go and have a look? Yeah. Can we go and have a look? It's one of the toys, isn't it? Is 
Is that those fucking crawling babies? <laughs> Please tell me it is. Why are the crawling babies in there? I know how much you love them. <laughs> so what we've done is we've set up some uh, trigger objects. If this okay. is a room where we've heard children or babies, we figure we'll put things in there that the babies may respond to. And it sounds like one of the babies has moved from where we put it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show I you. I told you they that. move things. I told you they move things. Yeah. All right, well, welcome to the bedroom. So the babies respond to noise and will move once they've heard noises. So that one's moved all the way over here. Yeah, so it was there and it's now behind the door. That's weird. That's a long way to go. <laughs> Babies are creepy. What's the plan? All right. So there the plan were three is... in the bed and the little one said, roll over. <laughs> this is a normal night at our house anyway when All Zach right. comes up. All right, so we have a few things. We've got the babies. Also, we have Boo Jr. here. So he picks up on the electromagnetic field. So if there's any EMF, he'll start flashing red. Okay. We have Boo Buddy Intermediate. Now, he has a lot of sensors built into him, so he's not just a teddy bear. So if he says uh, something like, oh, that's nice of you to hold my hand or something, that means that something... I like hugs. Yeah, that means that something has come close to him. Uh, so the I like hugs is uh, trying to encourage interaction from children spirits that may be around. Okay. I'm used to sharing my bedroom with a couple of rescue greyhounds, but nothing, I say nothing, has ever creeped me out more or stunk at the mattress more than one Zach Wild. He absolutely reeks. Anyway, this room was pretty creepy, all right? Creepy as fuck, in fact. And apparently, where I was laying, people had seen a man in the middle of the night. Gross. We have one more bit of gear, which is like the spirit boxes that we've used before that scans through the radio waves, but this one's a little bit different in that it doesn't go in a linear direction. It jumps all over the place and it gets rid of a lot of the ch -ch 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 noise, which can be really annoying. The other thing is I need one of them to pop their finger on the antenna button at the back there so that they become the antenna themselves, so that the radio signal will be going through them and into here. Oh, this is what it sounds like. Who wants to be the radio antenna? I do. I definitely do. The ghost grannies and the crew left the room, turned the lights out and left us three alone in a 200-year-old bedroom with, well, hopefully not a 200-year-old mattress because that is a whole lot of jizz. Anyway, the babies on the floor creeped me out, the ghost-detecting bear creeped me out, and the ghost children, oh, the whole thing just sucks. All right, we are going dark, the doors are shut, the blindfolds are on. We're looking for children. <laughs> Not in the Catholic Church way. No. Are there, are there any kids in here? I think it said freak. I thought it said freak too. I think it did say freak. I'm sorry, it was a joke. <laughs> uh, are there any children in here? I think it said yes, faintly. It did sound, so, sound like it said yes. What is your name? Ace? Reese. Reese. Reese is not a 200 Reece year old name. Reese Maston, oh my god. Reese Maston's career is back from the dead. Reese Maston, too. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone in here? Is there anyone here who is six years old? Oh. Oh. What was that? Is Robert in here? Hello? Hello, Robert. Robert. Rob's not here. Can you touch the toys behind us? If you touch them, they will light up or make a noise. Nope. <laughs> or if you touch the babies on the ground, those toys, would you like to pick one of those up? They're there for you to play with. Is there anyone who is not alive anymore near us? We don't wish you any harm, we just wanted to talk to you. Just got darker. Where are you from? <laughs> what? It just got darker and you got a blindfold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but I mean, in a in a evil way. I think they were having too much fun in there. Yeah. Are you mad at us because we're in here giggling? And by that I mean me. And they were too comfortable because there was all three of them in there. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, this is easy because we're together. Yeah. But then we put Zach in there on his own. Yeah. And that was a little bit different. Yeah. How many people are in the room? <laughs> Five. Oh, this is fucking creepy, man. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah, is Robert here as well? No. No. Do you like us filming? Yes, we're filming. Is it okay that we're filming here tonight? This is fun. You think this is fun? Let's see what. So I've been out here listening to Zach's conversation and it sounds like he's on a terrible first day. How has your night been? Uh, unreal. unreal. Yeah? What did you do for work? Everything? Like he's speed dating in there, asking ridiculous questions like, are you having fun? <laughs> Did you come to see me? <laughs> Did you come to see me? Came to see me? <laughs> He's lost. <laughs> Turn around. That was good. I don't know if someone's banging on the door or the closet. Is someone at the door? Or is someone in the closet? You better come in. How'd you go? Yeah, all right. Talking to a couple of mates. Yeah. You sound like you're having fun. You sound like you're on a bit of a date there for a minute. <laughs> I felt like someone was knocking at the door. Really? What, well, when you were talking to them? Well, I don't know. I felt like you were knocking at the door. I was in the kitchen eating shortbread, actually. Well, someone was knocking at the door or on the, inside the cupboard. That's fucking creepy. Are you not going in there? No way. Not if someone's knocking in the cupboard. So I always like to try in, and bring in a little bit of the old fashioned style of uh, spirit communication. And this was a style that they would have used in Victorian times. And they would ask the spirits to come forward and change the flame to indicate that they were there. So you can hear a little noise at the moment. That just means that it's getting warmer in here. So I, I've got a glass cylinder to try and stop our breath <laughs> doing anything to it. So I'm talking now and it's not doing anything. So what we'd like to do is just focus our attention on the candle flame. And I want you to, as I say the words, imagine it doing what I'm asking it to do and we'll see that if it will respond. So I'm calling upon the spirits here to come forward and let us know that you are here by making that candle flutter. Can you make it just flutter a little bit for us to let us know that you are here? There you go, thank you. That's awesome, thank you so much. If we have 
a female spirit here with us. Could you make the candle flame go long and thin? Thank you. Oh, yes, all right. Thank you. Did you belong to the house here, the lady that is here with us? Were you one of the residents that lived here? Yeah? Thank you. Were there children in this house? If you'd like to say no, just make the candle flame smaller. The beeping that's happening on the floor, the, the room's that increasing it, in temperature. Yeah, it, it, it's rising in temperature because there's more people in here, there's obviously, and we've now got a flame. There's a lot of hot in there, particularly Zach Wall. So if you'd like to answer yes, can you please make the candle flutter like you did then? Oh. If you're very, very talented, you might be able to put that flame out for us. Could you blow it out? I have actually seen that happen. Really? Me too. When? Where? Uh, when I used to train doing uh, Ouija board and table tipping, um, we had loud bangs in the house and the candle went and it, it, it like almost exploded out. What is your reaction at that point? Are you really happy, excited, Holy or do you shit. just run? <laughs> yeah, uh, I was actually quite excited, but the two people that were with us were terrified. Bet. I mean, I guess, you know, sceptically speaking, if you ask it a question and then it flutters, does that mean that the, the answer is yes, or is it just well, time? Well, we did ask to say that the fluttering is yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm not real convinced on this one either. If there, if there is a spirit in this room, please put that light out. Put that flame out. Blow the candle out. Please. Blow it out. Use your energy to blow it out. Keep going. Blow it out. Blow it out. Come on. You're nearly there. Get rid of it. Come on. As with all experiments, sometimes they work straight off and sometimes you have to concentrate a little bit longer or work with that particular type of experiment a yeah. little bit longer. And it's something we're not experienced in, so I, I think maybe we need to practice that ourselves mm. um, and maybe read up on it a little bit more and maybe try again another time. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, it was worth a try. As it's I said, we've never done anything like that before. It so. is interesting. Yeah, and I've, I've seen other people can get the candle to lean over to the right and to the left and wow. do all sorts of things and elongate. But so you definitely did that, though, when you said that before. It stretched yeah, up. Yeah, it did. That it did. definitely worked. That was weird. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Zach and I to go through this 200-year-old house alone See if we can find any ghouls. Let's do it. You excited? No. <laughs> so we're gonna go walk over the cellar. I think we should go into this room first. This is one of the bedrooms. Mind your melon. Hello? Oh, I can't see too much. Is there anybody in here? If there's someone in here, move them curtains. Please move the curtain. This is where the noise was coming from before, was over Above here. Above the cellar. Have a look at that hallway. How creepy is that hallway? Oh, come. I thought this was a ghost. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> like I turned around the corner and then it just glowed Ooh. white. <laughs> Why am I going first? This is your show, mate. Yeah, I know, but I'm the talent. Do you think that thing looks like a coffin? Can you see it? Yeah, that is such a coffin. This hallway is so scary. I do not like it at all. That's that room you were in. I've got so many goosebumps right now. Is 
Is there anyone in here? Hello? Let's get let's go in here. Right. <laughs> you going first? <laughs> oh, careful, you fucking. That's fucking so fucking creepy, I hate it. I hate it in here. I hate it. Why do I do this? I've got so much better content. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. How about that? Alright. Fuck that room gives me the creeps. Oh, I'm just I'm covered in fucking goosebumps just constantly throughout this night. We're currently in the dining room. Apparently they see a figure of a woman, which is very sexist. Hello, is there anyone in here? I think I just seen like a shadow move through there. Really? Yep. I feel like it's still moving through there now. This Victorian hallway has seen thousands of people walk down it over many generations. Could Zach have just seen one of those people making the walk that they are destined to make for the rest of eternity as the clock strikes midnight? This camera's looking too much like fucking paranormal activity. It's creeping me out. Probably not. He probably just saw a shadow or something. But anyway, still pretty creepy, right? Well, Zachariah. Well, Isaac. Isaac. No ghouls. Zach thinks he saw a shadow. We have to in, go back over. In the hallway, but we have to go back over the footage, so I don't know. But it was, I don't know, there wasn't much happening in there. It <sighs> seems like a really calm place. That room's creepy though. The one you were in by yourself? Yeah. That and the cellar, that was the creepiest by far. Yeah, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. Just down there, knowing that people were locked down there, that was quite terrifying. But yeah, I haven't been that scared doing anything. Oh my god, it's a poodle! <laughs> that poodle died in 1972. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the hunt, the haunt, the expedition of Lock and Bar House. And I think we come up with some pretty creepy experiences in a house that's 200 years old, where with a convict history of people being chained up, death, destruction, and other things Bush that ranges. happened, bush rangers, and millions of dogs all around the bloody house. This is infested with dogs. That makes us very happy. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to the ghost grannies who still refuse to take that name, but it is their name. Very much a big thank you to little Zachy Wild, little Dixon and everybody else who were involved. We'll be back, so let us know exactly where you want us to go in this weird and creepy world of ours. Preferably in Australia, because we can't leave the country because some dude ate a bat. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, me dick stinks. We, see, we certainly haven't really caught any ghosts on camera yet, but hopefully we will. See you later. Toodaloo, au revoir, bye. Hooray.